on to the adventure and put my on W four C Y three. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm very excited about our next guest because, of course, uh, not only is he cool and got some cool vapes and some cool music, but he is the lead singer of one of my favorite bands ever. So let's welcome to the show Chuck Billy of Testament. How are you? Good. What's happening, Pipe Man? Oh, man, I got to tell you. I, I got to tell you a story, you know, we, as you know, as we all know, we were off for a couple of years. And uh, so one of the first bits back to uh, live music for me, because I go around to all the festivals and, you know, do radio coverage was uh, Aftershock. And uh, oh, yeah. I do all the DWP festivals, but I specifically, when that lineup came up, I'm like, that is my favorite lineup ever because of course we had thrash metal day you know and it, it was like it was like a dream between you guys and exodus and death angel and anthrax and metallica i mean i just felt like i was a show had a show back in the 80s again totally i mean same for us i mean and, and to be home here in the bay area for that was even better, more special yeah totally that that's what made it even really cool. And then here we go again. You guys are going on tour, and I mean, like, it, it couldn't be a better tour. You, Exodus, and Death Angel. I mean, like that. That is like the ultimate tour for somebody like me, at least. Yeah, it's it, for us as well. I mean, we've been talking about um, when we see each other shows. Like, why haven't we all played together? Like, oh, we just couldn't. Like, the stars weren't ready to line up yet. And uh, when we did the bass strikes back in Europe, uh, February, March of 2020, um, you know, we just were getting ready to launch the Titans of Creation. We went to Europe on the package and we had a blast. The tour is very successful. We sold out everywhere. We just had a, a, we had fun going on that tour. And then, of course, COVID hit and all the plans of um, all the other, cause we're good. We're taking the base strikes back everywhere in the world. We want to go to South America, Japan, we are going to take it everywhere. And then of course COVID stopped that. And we actually had the opportunity to get back out there a little earlier, but they are having like, you know, half capacity rooms that they would only allow in and you had to wear your masks and the bands had to really isolate and be in their own bubbles. And, and it didn't sound fun. And then we actually just looked into a little more of some of the other bands of friends who have been on the road and said, you know, it was great to get out there, but it just wasn't the same. We all had to stay away from each other and be in our own bubbles. And it just wasn't fun. And so we talked amongst us bands and said, you know what? We had such a good time in Europe. You guys really want to go out there and, you know, not have fun. And we're like, not at all. Let's want, let's, let's put it on the back burner when things get more normal let's go out there and do it and have fun and, and, and take it where we left off in Europe. Yes. And, and you know, it's funny you should say that because it's kind of hard to have a fun thrash metal show when you have to socially distance. <laughs> it kind of doesn't yeah, we're make joking, sense. Going, we're <laughs> joking with each other and going, we're going to be waving for at each other from our buses. Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So, you know, interesting for Aftershock. Before that, you know, uh, I was about to, you know, start the tour with all the festivals, which was supposed to start with Rocklahoma. And I went and visited my kids and grandkids before going out, and my granddaughter gave me COVID. So, oh, man. It, it was bad, but it was good. 
because I missed Rocklahoma because of it. But then the doc said, because I had, I was vaccinated. I, I had COVID. I did the Regeneron antibody treatment. I felt like I was like, I had superhuman, metahuman, uh, anti COVID powers, you know? And so the doc, right. the doc was like, okay, the rest of your festivals, you can go. You don't have to worry about giving it to anybody or getting it from anybody. And, and then you guys played and I was able for the first time in a couple years to be in a mosh pit and not even worry because I was like in there and I, I didn't even care. Now, if I had, I not gotten COVID, I probably would have been, yeah, I'll just watch this time. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, once you get it, you got a little bit of antibodies for helping protect you. And then of course the vaccine, I mean, that's my opinion. I'm sure people, other people have different opinions, but you know, I, I think it's actually a, a step in the right direction to getting back to normalcy. Yeah. And, and I think we're getting there now. You know, it's like, I think 2022, fingers crossed, this is the year that we're back to normal. Or close. Besides the war. <laughs> yeah. Ex- yeah. Besides that. Yeah. But in a COVID realm, let me be specific, in a COVID realm. And so let's talk about that yeah. since you brought it up for a second. I don't know about you, but I remember back in the 80s, me and my best bro that we went to all our shows together, we're still best bros today. Uh, we were like, ah, it doesn't matter. The whole world's going to blow up because of, you know, the Cold War and nuclear war and all that. And never, I didn't even think I would live to 30 because of nuclear war. Never did I think in 2022 we would be talking about it again. It's so weird because, you know, in those early years, like my first record with Testament I got to write was The New Order. And so a lot of those songs was about a lot of Nostradamus predictions of the end of the world and climate change and all these things that we were writing about. We actually live through them now, you know, 35 years later, right. we've, we've experienced <laughs> it. And then and then talking about a World War Three was almost unthinkable that that could happen in today's age. Right. When people look back at, you know, Hitler's reign and how awful it was and disgusting and and that that, that could never happen again. And then you see what's happening today to innocent people in the Ukraine. You're like, oh my God, is this real? I mean, in today's age this is happening and the world's letting it happen. It's almost unreal. You it know is. what I mean? It's totally unreal. And what's unreal to me too is like that you can take songs that were written back in the eighties and just substitute a couple names and have the same song today. That blows my mind. Exactly. Exactly. So here's the here's some of the best news of all too okay so i remember going way back when uh it was probably 81 used to hang out at the, in la at the troubadour in the country club with with a friend of mine that was in this band that nobody knew and uh and then you know this band went up to the bay area to join you guys and now the drummer of that band who i used to hang outside the country club with is now back with you guys and to me dave lombardo is the absolute bar none best drummer ever in history just my opinion yeah i mean definitely for thrash metal style if dave created that and there's been many we've had so many amazing drummers and and dave definitely has this unique style dave is really a unique style of playing he plays the thrash but his energy and how hard he hits the drums or adds a whole nother dimension to like our band, even though Gene Holgan, the Tommy clock is amazing and he can play anything on the spot and very per- with precision where Dave's a little more looser, you know, Dave's loose, but it's something about it. There's, he has a special dave to him. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. I love it. You know? <laughs> oh man. And, and, I, the first thing I thought when I saw that news is, man, I can't wait till Testament puts out another album. I mean, you guys have an album in 2020 that is badass, but I'm just imagining this new album with Dave 
for the first time doing an album with Dave and God know how many years is it now? I don't even remember how many years, but, uh, 21 years. Yeah. 21 years. And I'm just thinking how brutal and badass a new Testament album is going to be in the future with Dave. Well, you know, what's funny is the gathering record we did with Dave was really a turning point for Testament. Um, because we had came off of being on Atlantic records and having a breakup of the original band and, you know, doing records like demonic and then finally getting into the gathering with Dave came aboard. I think we real Testament really found who we were because we have a, had a culmination of like everything we did. We started tuning the guitars down and it was more soothing for my voice and Eric started adding more black metal blast beats into our music. And I think the gathering was really who Testament at that point found who we were. And I think from that point forward, we've kind of came up and created music with that energy and that style moving forward from the gathering. And then now here we are, which 22 years later, Dave's back and Eric has a whole bunch of new riffs ready to go. And the beauty of when we wrote the gathering with Dave is that Eric was always the guy who would work out the drums on a drum machine and present a demo to a drummer and say, here, just make it yours now. Um, that gathering record, Eric was just jamming and Dave's like, I'm, we're not doing a demo, just play. So Eric really got to focus on the riffs and Dave just jumped in and jam and they really created something special. Nice. So my fingers are crossed and hopes are that Dave's going to bring something special back when we write something again. Yeah, totally. And, and the energy that there's going to be in this show, not that there's a, not always like badass energy, but I just think the energy in this show and this tour with these three bands is going to be after two years of what we've been going through. I think it's exactly what the doctor ordered <laughs> to be blunt. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, it's the COVID whole COVID thing of being home for two years. We've never been home for two years ever in our whole career. And so, and just with the pandemic and, you know, in our lifetime experiencing something like this, this, you know, the virus, it's a little going back out there. You want to be cautious, but it's a, for me, I get a little anxious because I've been home for so long. Yeah. It's like, oh, I got to get out and leave my house and leave my animals. And I got so comfortable <laughs> being home. It, it's it's almost a little weird to leave again now. And I'm sure I'll get over it right away once I get into the groove of playing music. But there is something weird to getting back on my feet again. You know, what's so funny about that is I've been talking about it's like becoming institutionalized. Because I remember the first show I went to cover, it was near me in like some little amphitheater and it was sublime and dirty heads in a local amphitheater. Like we're talking about, you know, the first show of a <laughs> of pandemic and I'm, I was sitting backstage. I was looking out at the crowd, like it's South Florida. So it's hot. Everybody's got their shirts off, sweating, starting. Can I? I just looked out there. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm staying here. It looked like a Petri dish to me, but then <laughs> as I got more used to it. And then when I went to those festivals after COVID, I remember standing in the middle of one of them. I can't remember which one it was. And just like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. I just feel alive again. Yeah. I'm sure there's something to that. I mean, my very first plane flight during COVID was that same way. You know, it's like, Oh my God, I'm going to an airport or, I have no control of where people are coming from or who they met. Mm -hmm. So I was really protective wearing my mask everywhere so that I, I get it. And I can imagine, especially going to a concert shoulder to shoulder with people. You're like, I don't know where they've been. No, you know, I, I'm tired of wearing my mask, but I also don't want to get sick. And you know, it's just a weird, a weird thing. It to it totally is weird. That's why, I'm so excited about what may be this year because it, with festivals, concerts, and stuff, because it seems like we're in full force here, and fingers crossed it'll stay that way. Fingers crossed this tour you guys are doing will stay that way. And I also want to talk about, since this is something that is helpful for people too and, and something that you know, you're know you involved in, let's talk about your vapes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Chief. Yes, 
Yeah, we did. Uh, we did the first um, chief um, ones five years ago, um, and we actually have a new generation of them coming out now. Um, they're available on LordDaper.com. You can find them. Um, we'll probably carry a few out on the tour too to sell. But you know, it's something, and we're expanding on that. We have um, the vape line, and we actually have some. You know, actually can actually smoke weed through them. We're actually working with another company, a baker, to start doing some edibles as well. So we're just expanding. I mean, the since that first vape came out, dispensaries legalization has came a long way since then. Yeah, it has. So it's um it's different. You know, before sneaking your vape or something on the plane was like scary. Now it's like shit. They don't even they look at it and don't even care. Yeah, it's wild, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you yeah. know, the way things are nowadays with that, it blows my mind, too, because think back when we were in the 80s. It's like, it's so funny now, when, especially in California, when I go do coverage for concerts or festivals there, you know, if you go out to what was normally the cigarette smoking area, it's everybody smoking area, but not cigarettes. And it's like just so wild. It's like, at first you're like, wow, they're just doing it right there. <laughs> well, yeah, our, the, was the first state was like Colorado. Yeah. We flew in to play a show there. I forgot what festival it was. We flew in and we were checking in the hotel and during like the, you know, briefing at the hotel, they're like, yeah, this, and, and the smoking section, the smoking tent's out back. And I'm like, smoking tent? I'll smoke cigarettes. <laughs> like, oh, not cigarettes. And I'm like, Oh, oh, that's right. Forgot where we're at. And so we went out to the smoking tent. There he's in there smoking weed. And like, man, this is how cool is this? Right? Totally. It's like, too, a few years ago, I was at the Rainbow, and, and like, everybody was out there smoking. I'm like, whoa, the Rainbow's always been cool. Well, that's but... always been like that. <laughs> right. Before it got legalized, everybody smoked out on the patio there. We'd sit out there with the guys from Cypress Hill or... Yep. Fair Factory or my cousin Steph in the Death Tones. And, I mean, everybody would be out there just smoking weed on the patio. Well, that's what was funny about it because everybody was there. But I was, it, what was weird me out was, it was they were doing it legally, you know. And it, it's so funny because it's like, wow, it's just wild where we've come. Yeah, tell everybody how, let's start with, tell everybody how they can connect you to check out the vapes a website for a social media for that. And then let's tell everybody about your social media Testament, social media and how they can connect with you, get merch, check out the tour dates, all that good stuff. Yeah. I mean, you can go to testamentlegions.com and you'll find everything from the tour dates to merchandise. Um, to, and the vaporizers are at lordvapor.com. That's V A T O R Lord vapor. Um, you can find all of our chief products there and all kinds of other cool products as well. Um, you know, but we do have now a, a coffee out, um, with rock D coffee. It's called dark roast of earth and it's really good. Man. So if, you, if you're a coffee drinker, you're going to enjoy it. It's really good. Um, we're actually going to be putting out, um, we're talking right now with a native American tribe in Washington state who is going to be the very first native american owned distillery in america wow and we're going to be working putting out a, a whiskey and a beer with them and it's they're going to get worldwide distribution and it that that's a big step for natives because when they decided they wanted to do this the bureau of indian affairs actually approached them and said hey man you can't do that you know and they're like what and like you can't do that there's a treaty 150 years ago that won't let native americans drink alcohol or produce alcohol on their reservations. So they actually went and took it to Congress and got it passed and removed. So it was a big step for a lot of natives that can actually start, you know, sustaining their own money through like, you know, distilleries or breweries or whatever they have. So that, that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to be part of the, the push for them. And Testament's going to be one of the first, bands because we have the native connection with them and uh, i think it's gonna be that's gonna be a cool thing that is that's pretty amazing too because like as you were first starting to talk about how there was a treaty where they couldn't drink or make their own alcohol i'm like that's to be blunt bullshit so I, i'm glad that got changed and this is happening 
Well, nobody's made any changes or, or challenged it for 150 years till now. And that's, that's what blows me away. It's like, wait a minute, you're saying we can't do what, <laughs> you know, the native Americans, and all people on reservations, they, they feel like they're out in their own world because, you know, they have to have their own police, their own government, everything is they're on their own, you right. know? Um, so why not let us brew or make a living for ourselves? You know, the government shut them down on that, you know? Wow. So it's like, wow, you know, what if they would have lost? That would have even been even worse. But, yeah. You know, they took it to Congress, did the right thing, got it passed, and now it opened the doors for a lot more tribes. That's amazing. I love it. Uh, good stuff. And is there any final things you want to tell the listeners that we haven't covered already that they need to know? Um, well, just, you know, I just definitely want to let all the fans know that, you know, Gene Hoagland, you know, people might think, oh, he left. There must Something must have happened. Not at all. Gene's our pal. He's our friend. I would never count Gene of never jamming with us. You know, his last words. We actually have, um, after Gene made the announcement, we decided, said, hey, Gene, you mind coming up and how about we shoot a, um, a playthrough of all the songs on Titans of Creation? So he did. He came up and we, we do a playthrough. So we're going to be releasing a DVD of us playing all the whole record of Titans of Creation. Wow. And that's something pretty cool. And there was no hard feelings. It just was conflicting schedules. But before Gene left, he said, hey, man, if you get a situation where you don't have a drummer, let give me a call. If I'm free to do it. I'll jam. I'll do it. So just just for people to know that we're pals. There's no n- nothing bad. It's, just, it's all good. Love it. Those are great final words. And yeah, he, he definitely is a great, great drummer. Testament is badass. You're going to be on tour. Everybody needs to get, check it out because, listen, if you've been cooped up for two years, there's no better tour, in my opinion, to go on than this tour because, I mean, you'll get, get it all out. You'll get all that anxiety and everything out that's been go- holding up for the past two years, and it's going to be a blast. So check out the Bay Strikes Back Tour, April 9th till May 20th. Testament exodus and death angel chuck thanks Uh, for being uh, with us thanks for making us such great music and thanks for being on the adventures of pipe man hey thanks pipe man we'll talk soon and hopefully see you out there on the road absolutely 100 percent hey everybody this is chuck billy from testament here with the pipe man on w4cy radio yeah Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio. Radio.